and here are our six aspirations to achieve by 2022. So as the market leader in e commerce, we want to help drive 100% annual growth over the next four years. Now just bear in mind what this means. This doesn't mean 100% growth after four years. This means 100% growth year on year. And we have a lot of confidence that we can achieve this. Nepal's GDP is expected to grow by 6% every year. We are getting embracement from government ministries for developing the regulatory framework for e-commerce. So we have a lot of confidence that we can achieve these aggressive targets. Yeah, so the second um, aspiration that we have is actually about our seller. So Bjarne already mentioned that we actually have quite a good or a huge pool of sellers, but we're still far from being done. And the reason is that we really want to focus on bringing more sellers on the marketplace. A marketplace will not work without sellers. And our goal and our aspiration is to bring this number up by 2022 to 20,000 sellers. What does that mean? Actually, it means this is a 10x improvement to where we stand right now. This is huge. We know it's not going to be easy, um, but we want to manage it. And the great thing also about Bjarne talked about Durant University. So we will continue to work on educating sellers on the latest e-commerce trends, on the latest features, on the latest processes to make them better and grow leaders. So these 20,000 sellers, they're going to need a way to get their products to their customers. So we're going to need to develop a fully digitalized logistics ecosystem. And most importantly, provide real-time visibility to every Duras customer, no matter where you live, even if you're in Kathmandu or in the hills of Italy or somewhere like this. The most important thing we can do is not discriminate based on where a customer is, but provide them real-time visibility on the location of their package with a fully digitalized logistics ecosystem. Yes, the next one is about, you, about our users. So by 2022, we actually want to engage around 5 million users on a monthly basis. Again, this is massive. If you consider where we stand right now, this again means we have a 10x improvement uh, to our current monthly base. Um, and how do we do that? We need to make sure that we stay relevant. Relevant in terms of always having the latest products with our sellers, offering the latest features, be convenient, improve our customer experience all the time, and most importantly, be very service minded. And that means not only to our buyers, but also to our sellers, right? So in general, it works together as a marketplace. Yes, and those 5 million customers are going to need to find a better way to pay than cash on delivery. We will still, of course, offer, offer this service to our customers, but we want to allow at least these 5 million new customers the chance to pay digitally. And what better way to introduce them than on their first purchase on Duras? Yes, and our last aspiration is actually on how everything ties together. So we talked about the sellers, we talked about the financial partners, we talked about the buyers, but eventually, we don't want to only want to grow Dara, we actually want to grow an ecosystem. And that means the ecosystem only works if we work as partners together. And the, growing the ecosystem means also creating employment. This on the one hand means, yes, we want to have more of our uh, own staff, that's very important. So we have currently a team of 350 people, which will definitely grow in the next year. The second part is that we obviously want to create job opportunities through our partners. Through our sellers that we talked about, our logistics partners will go to our platform, and obviously also our payment partners will have more job opportunities because of the market. So how do we achieve this? Well, first of all, we need to uh, we need to take a different look about how we run our company. So we've had these five values, and we take them very seriously. This actually impacts, for example, how our employees are appraised. They get judged on whether they have met up to our expectations as it relates to these values. The first is customer commitment. Almost everything Bianca said to you was all about how we serve our sellers and our customers. And we judge our employees' performance based on this. Secondly, if we consider teamwork. In Nepal right now, Daraz has approximately 400 employees. All of them have to work together. We maintain a really flat management structure, they all have to talk to each other and own what they do, and this means that they have to work really hard as a team. Yeah, the third one is integrity. So all the decisions that we do on a daily basis have to be ethical and they have to be honest. There is no way around it, that's very clear. 
The fourth one is ownership. So Jay already just pretty mentioned flat hierarchy. That's very true. We have very hardworking employees um, that we work a lot, but also they get a lot. So what we really see is that no matter if you're an intern or if you're a managing director, everyone can express his opinion, and if you find a problem, fix it. And this is what we really want to encourage, that it's not about seniority, it's really about being smart, being driven, and then you really can achieve a lot. And then the last one is what we used to refer as embrace the change. Um, and we wanted to make a small adjustment to, to this uh, last value, with actually with huge implications. So instead of just embracing the change, we want to proactively drive it. And that means we want to be the leader, the driver here in Nepal and the human industry, and be proactively the leader in terms of change. And that's why we're changing this value to create change. And this is what is all about why we're here today. That it seems just like the work, but it kind of simplifies and shows that we're the leader, that we really want to drive this together with all our partners that we talked about before and lead uh, Nepal into a digital area. Thank you. Thank you very much.